Let me come back to you again, uh, Nuru. You went through a very intensive, thorough process and uh, you came out a winner. What would you say if you had to advise someone uh, who is back there in Africa, who is somebody, frankly, that is interested to walk in your footsteps to become a Mandela Washington Fellow? What is it that uh, they need to do, they must do, in order to make it? Um, I think this program uh, was about young people who are already doing different things in their communities, doing things that are impacting their communities. For example, are you a young entrepreneur who is doing business to be out of um, unemployment and you're also impacting fellow young people? Or are you in civic leadership to see that different issues are sorted out? So the first advice is young people should find different things to do to impact their community. They should be part of the solution. Many times as young people, we want to point fingers. We want to point the blame to someone else. So I think as young people, we need to take initiative. We need to be responsible. We need to be part of the solution. Then if you're part of the solution, when such an opportunity comes, mm -hmm. then you're ready to apply for it. And the very good thing I like about this Mandela Washington Fellowship, you do not need to know anyone. You do not need to come from a certain family. You do not have to have a certain social status. You just need to prove yourself as a person who's worthy. You just need to show the impact of the work you do and your future plans. Because one of the things we are asked is, first of all, uh, what are you doing? And what are you planning to do? Because after becoming a Mandela Washington Fellow, there is much that we, is expected from you. Like, it's not the end after becoming a Mandela Washington Fellow, that's not the end. It's actually almost the beginning of the story because then we expect so much from you as a Mandela Washington Fellow. So it's more of, as a young person, what are you doing? Be part of the solution. Don't just stand on the sidelines and just wait to pass on the blame. After doing that, definitely you can apply and you can be there are one of the people, Mandela. There are a lot of people, of course, who look at you, Nur, and say, you are a success that you have actually succeeded. Uh, because obviously, you happen to be one of a group of people that is being characterized as Africa's best and brightest. Yeah. You know, there is someone who has defined the success as not being a reward, but in fact, a consequence of one's efforts. Do you agree with that characterization? I, I definitely agree with that, that um, it's, it comes with work. You know, no one gives it to you. But I also believe that um, I'm still on a journey. I don't, this is like, I'm still, this is like the beginning. I, I feel I still have a lot of things to do and a lot of things to accomplish and a lot of things to impact my community, especially in Uganda, you know. In Uganda, we have challenges as young people is right now, we have that almost, uh, 87, 78% um, of the population are young people below the age of 30, at the age of 30. Mm -hmm. So that is a challenge. So I believe one of the things we need to do as young people is be part of the, sol the solution and also know that we can impact our community. So if you ask me about success, yes, I believe I've earned something, but I also believe that I'm still on a journey. You know, I can't say, okay, I'm mm -hmm. there. I'm, I believe this is just the beginning. Chippy, what about you? What is your definition of success? And do you consider yourself successful? Yes, um, obviously, I think they're just different thoughts to it. But um, as you said earlier, I think that the first thing one has to do is to be determined and, and work hard, and therefore success will follow. There, if you work hard, um, there is nothing more that, that, that will go wrong with that. You don't go wrong with working hard. You have to be uh, determined, you have to be persistent. And um, in light of the application process, talking about the same success, for example, um, the process was quite rigorous, and you needed one needed to be to be persistent. For example, they would ask us to, um, they did ask us to submit like a 1,000 word AC. You know, um, you had to convince the panel and the people that were looking at the applications mm -hmm. why you are the right person. And one of the key things they were looking at is the impact that you have actually uh, made in your community. That's why community service is also very important. And we have to always regard it as, as part of our success. So as we are, we are talking about um, a success story, it shouldn't be about 
oh, I have a master's degree, oh, I have a PhD. It has to be something more than that. It has to be a question of what have you done with that degree? What have mm -hmm. you done with that mm -hmm. PhD? How many lives have you actually changed? How many people have you, um, have you actually moved from point A to point C because of what you have actually done? And those are the things that we're looking at, community service, which is something that I would encourage um, um, a fellow young leaders in Africa to actually embrace because it's something that some of the things that we have actually noted here in, in USA that it's, it's actually uh, very common, it's valued a, a lot. You have to um, give back to, to your society. You have to be able to, to do something that, that, uh, that impacts on the community other than uh, it being a personal benefit. And when you are in that position where you have changed somebody's life or people can say um, they have, uh, you have moved them from a point of disadvantage disadvantage I think it would be um, fair to call that to call that success it doesn't have to be about personal benefits or what or what you have acquired as a person or as an individual but what you have actually done for society and for community for your country or for your region or whatever it is now Fauzia uh, you come from a country uh, where some people will say that uh, if you want to have unfettered access to an opportunity you either have to have a very powerful aunt, a powerful uncle, or you have to be part of the patronage system. Certainly not uh, uh, merit, uh, as it were. This is not me. This is uh, stuff that I hear from a lot of people who write about Kenya, and, and I talk about it. Uh, when you learnt about this particular opportunity, did you sincerely feel that uh, you had a chance? that you had a shot, if you could give it your all, that you could, in fact, become a Mandela Washington Fellow? Um, yes, I did. First of all, it's because I believed in myself. I believed in what I did for my community. And as my friend said, that success is not somebody to come and award you, or success is not somebody who is in such and such positions. Success is doing something tangible that positively impacts our communities, our friends, our lives, our families. And I believe I was, when I was applying, I was like, Fauzia, you're a leader. And being a leader, it doesn't mean that um, um, somebody sees you that you're a leader. No, you believe in yourself. You believe in what you have done, in your efforts. And when you are sincere with yourself and honest and true to what you're doing, then I think you have no barrier. So when the program came, I applied. And of course, I was happy, as any other African uh, youngster, that it wasn't going through anybody, it wasn't going through any institution. We were directly applying to US Department of State um, through IREX. So when... <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, Hakuna Kitu Kidogo. So um, I said, and the essays, you had to have written those essays yourself. So because I could relate to it, because this is something you have done. It's not something that somebody else has done. It's you. And you are the one who knows what your pressing needs are back home. And I am a change maker today. And as a change maker, then I would write what I have gone through or my experiences are. And uh, being a leader is leading with, no, with or without authorities. When you lead without any authority above you, and you know that this is what you are supposed to do, then that is a true leader. You don't need anybody to identify you as a leader because of you, are, you come from this family or because you're in that position. Interesting. Uh, uh, Nuru, you are smart, uh, very knowledgeable, very confident for a lady of your age. Um, what really inspired you to look beyond your stomach? There are a lot of people like you, someone will say, who are patriotic to their stomachs. The stomachs of their relatives, their family. But you seem, frankly, uh, to be someone who looks beyond that. What inspired you to do that? So what inspired me to do the work I do is, first of all, my own story, my background, where I come from. So uh, briefly about me, I come from a family where my mother did not complete primary school. My father did not complete secondary school, but for some reason they believed in education, so they put us through school. But I think when I was about 15 years of age, um, my father could no longer afford my school fees, so it was a bit tough. So I think I stayed home for almost half a year mm -hmm. without going to school. So when I went to school, so 
uh, around that time, some relatives suggested that, oh, let her get married. After all, she's at, uh, at home. At what age were you? 15. Really? Yes. Wow. So when some people suggested that, of course, uh, my parents did not agree with that. I did not agree with that. So I went to my school and told them, okay, this is the issue at home. So when I told them, they allowed me to pay in installments. And I also worked to pay my school fees. And they also uh, contributed part of the tuition. So that is how I finished high school. Now, before finishing high school, my pa mother passed away. So when she oh. passed away, my whole hope of going through school was like, there was no hope. So what I did for my university is I had to do different odd jobs to pay for my university. And that is how I managed to complete my university. So after completing my university, um, I, I managed to get a job, of course, through volunteering, through working a lot, mm -hmm. you know, through being proactive, I managed to get a, a job immediately. So what I did is, after getting the job, I just decided, after getting the job, I realized that many of my friends were not employed. So that is how I quit my job to start this organization, to inspire young girls, to tell them that it doesn't matter what you go through, if you can be confident, if you can believe in yourself, if you can work hard, you will be rewarded someday. It doesn't because, matter where you come from. Because you can uh, be just something very to add on, because girls, usually when you go through a lot of challenges, you're vulnerable. You know, sometimes you can get pregnant because some man is promising some little money, or you can become HIV. So if no one is in your life to, to support you, you may go the wrong way. So that is why I do the work I do in Uganda. Terrific, terrific.